Good morning class. My presentation today will be about population growth patterns. A species can be rare in one location while being commonly abundant somewhere nearby. Or rare in a specific location one year but abundant the next year. For any given species, environmental factors limit the growth of its populations in different places and times. The two growth patterns we will be focusing on today are exponential and logistical patterns. All populations have the potential for exponential growth. As individuals and a population increase, the number of new individuals added per unit of time accelerates even if births and deaths occur continuously. A graph of this population forms a continuous upward curve. Exponential growth can be expressed as change in number of individuals over change in time equal to births minus death. In reality no real population can maintain exponential growth for very long. As the density increases as a result of population increase resources required for a specific species become depleted. Without adequate resources birth rates will drop and death rates rise. An environment has only enough resources to support a restricted number of individuals of a species indefinitely. That number of individuals is called the carrying capacity. The growth of a population decreases as that population size reaches the carrying capacity. When a population decreases in growth as resources become limited that population display a pattern called logistic growth. The graph of a population demonstrating logistic growth resembles an S-shaped curve. Logistic growth can be expressed as the carrying capacity minus the population size over carrying capacity. As long as population size is less than carrying capacity only a fraction of available resources are being used. As long as population size is less than carrying capacity only a fraction of available resources are being used. As the population size approaches carrying capacity the fraction of resources available for any new individual becomes smaller. This means that every new individual added to the population depresses population growth by an equal amount. So population growth stops when population size is equal to carrying capacity. The growth of a population can be limited by density dependent or density independent factors. Factors with an effect on population size that increase the size of a population in proportion to population density are called density-dependent regulation factors. These factors include but are not limited to food supply, predators and pathogens. With population increase there may be a food shortage which reduces the amount of food each individual receives. This ultimately decreases birth rates and increases death rates. Predators are more likely to be attracted to areas where their prey have a high population density. With more predators as a result of the higher population size there is a higher death rate compared to when there was a lower population size. Pathogens are more easily spread in dense populations than in populations with fewer individuals, resulting in higher death rates. Not all of the population regulation factors act in density-dependent ways. A period of cold or a tsunami that destroys the habitats of all animals in its way may kill a large proportion of individuals and a population regardless of its density, and are thus called density independent. Abiotic factors are those that tend to act on populations in a density independent fashion while biotic factors tend to be density dependent. A population's per capita growth rate is known as the intrinsic rate of increase, symbolized as R. A population's intrinsic rate of increase is the difference between the birth rate and death rate per individual. If the birth rate is greater than the death rate the population is growing. But if the death rate is greater than the birth rate the population is decreasing. Variation in life history traits has appeared to result from adaptation to different habitat conditions. Unpredictable habitats are associated with high birth rates and high R values because organisms make the most of rare opportunities to reproduce. Predictable habitats, where organisms have a high likelihood of reproducing have low birth rates and a low R value. Species whose life history strategies allow for high intrinsic rates of increase are called R strategists, 
and species whose life history strategies allow them to persist at or near the carrying capacity or their environment are called K strategists. R strategists can inhabit a broad range of habitats and have high tolerance for both low quality resources and environmental instability. Physiologically R strategists have rapid embryonic development, rapid maturation to reproductive age, and small body size. They reproduce randomly and only once producing a large number of offspring. Our strategists have a short lifespan and are density independent. The population of our strategists fluctuates from periodic or season population crashes to short periods of exponential population growth. House flies and rabbits are examples of some our strategists. K strategists need to fulfill a specific habitat requirement that incorporates environmental stability. They are efficient users of specific and high quality resources. Physiologically K strategists have extended embryonic development, long maturation to reproductive age, and large body size. They reproduce selectively and many times, each time producing few offspring. K strategists have a long lifespan and are density dependent. The population of K strategists slowly rises and levels off at carrying capacity. Polar bears and bluebirds are examples of some S strategists. Several factors give an explanation to why some species achieve higher population densities than others. But there are four main factors. For species that use more abundant resources generally reach higher population densities than species that use scarce resources. Secondly, species that have small body sizes generally reach higher population densities than species with large body sizes. This is because smaller individuals need less energy to survive opposed to larger individuals. Thirdly, complex social organization may facilitate high population densities. Highly social species such as ants or termites can reach high population densities. Lastly, species introduced to a new environment can reach high population densities. These species reach a high population density if normal predators and pathogens are absent. This population density can be temporary if new predators or forces get involved. This concludes our discussion on population growth patterns. Up next is my partner Tejinder Singh who will discuss population dynamics, demographics and reproduction rates.